Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a uh, workflow where you can use TypeScript on your back end with Node.js and Express. Um, now, a lot of you might have heard of Nest.js, which I actually did a crash course on, and it's a it's a back end framework built on top of Express that does use TypeScript. However, it's very high level. It's very similar to Angular in the way that it's structured and the way that you write your code. the syntax and all that. So if you don't feel like using something like that and you just want simple express with TypeScript uh, along with Nodemon, I'm going to go ahead and, and show you how to set that up. We'll also talk a little bit about TypeScript. Basically, if you don't know what it is, uh, I'm sure most of you do, but if you don't, it's a super set of JavaScript, meaning it includes everything that JavaScript includes with some additional features, including static type checking. So you can uh, basically, you know, say you want a certain variable to hold a string or a number or a Boolean, uh, your function returns, stuff like that. You can add interfaces, namespaces. I do have a crash course on TypeScript. It is a few years old, but it does have all the basics and fundamentals. So you might want to check that out. Now we're going to be using a package called TS node to integrate it with node. And this is uh, it's very easy to use. So we'll use that. And I'm just going to jump into VS code here. And before I get into TS node and all that stuff, I'm just going to show you some of the basics of TypeScript, how to how to run the compiler and stuff like that. So we're going to install this globally. So I'm going to do sudo npm install dash G TypeScript. And what this will do is it'll give us the TSC or the TypeScript compiler. So we can just do a dash dash version, make sure that's installed. And then let's let's create a file. I'm going to call this app.ts. Okay, your TypeScript file should have a TS extension. And let's go ahead and open up app.ts. And then in here we can create a variable like let's say greeting and let's say this variable has to have a string it has to be assigned to a string. And we'll say hello. Another thing we could do is create an array. So let's say we'll call this numbers. And let's say we want to give it the type of number, but it has to be an array. So we're going to put brackets there and then we can just simply create an array of numbers. So this is valid TypeScript. Now to compile it, we can use our TypeScript compiler and we can put in the name of the file, which is app.ts. And what's going to happen is it's going to generate an app JS, which is our actual JavaScript. Notice the types are gone. Um, And it's using var because that's the target by default uh, ES5. However, we're going to create a config file where you can change that target if you want. So you can kind of control the type of JavaScript that's compiled. Now, let's mess something up here. Like, let's put a string in here. And right away in VS Code, you'll notice the linting here. It says string is not assignable to type number. So it'll tell you right within the text editor if you're using VS Code. Um, but then if we try, if we go and compile this, it's still going to compile by default, but it will show you the errors down here. Okay. Um, now, if you want to constantly watch a file instead of having to type that in every time, you can just add the dash W, which is the watch flag. And now it'll constantly watch it. You can see found one error gives you the error. If we get rid of that and save, we get zero errors. Okay. Now, this isn't really the, the ideal way to do things. You want to set up a config file. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete the JavaScript file that was generated. Why didn't that delete? Uh, let's delete that. And then to create a TypeScript config file, you can create it manually if you want, but you can also use the TypeScript compiler by just doing dash dash init. And this file is called tsconfig.json and it has all the, the values in here, most most of which are commented out. I know it looks a little overwhelming, but you don't really need to know what every single one of these options do. Um, there's a couple things I just want to focus on. One is the target, which you can see is ES5. That's why it had var and stuff like that. We can change it to ES6 or even any of these. Um, and this will use arrow functions and, and stuff like that. All right, uh, module, we're going to keep that at common JS. The only other things that I really want to change here is going to be the output directory. I'm going to uncomment that in the root directory. So the output is where we want our compiled JavaScript to go, which I'm going to have go in a folder called dist. And then the root is where our TypeScript files are stored. And I'm going to have a folder called source. Okay, and then there's one other thing. 
that I wanted to do. Since we're using Node, let's uncomment this module resolution uh, to Node. And then that should be it. I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to create a folder called source. And that's where I want my TypeScript files to live. So I'm going to move that app TS. Now all I have to do is in the root, just simply type TSC, no file name or anything. It's going to automatically look at that source folder because that's what I described in the options. And it's going to create a dist folder with an app JS. And now you can see it's using const. It's now the target is now ES6. Okay, so again, you can change the way your JavaScript is is compiled or created. All right, so now let's let's get rid of this and we're going to start to get into Node and Express and all that. So I'm going to generate or initialize a package.json. Okay, and let's install Express. Express is the only regular dependency that I'm going to install. The rest are all dev dependencies. So let's uh let's let's go ahead and run npm install dash uppercase D, which will install a dev dependency. And we want TypeScript, even though we have it globally installed, we want it installed on the project as well. And TS node node mon, which is used to just constantly watch your server. Uh, we're going to configure it so that node mon will watch our TypeScript files. And then you can also install custom types like obviously we can use string boolean all that stuff node itself and express both have their own set of types that we can use so we can do at types slash node and we can do at types slash express. Okay, and these are all dev dependencies. <clears throat> all right, and then once that's done. We want to just add a couple scripts. So up here in scripts, what I'll usually do here is create a start script that will run the actual compiled JavaScript so with just node. Sorry about that bang and my son's playing with a ball up there. Um, so we'll just run node and then let's look in dist, which is where our JavaScript is app.js, which hasn't been created yet, but we'll create a build script to do that. Okay, we also want a dev script, which is going to actually run nodemon and we want nodemon to watch inside of our source our app.ts our typescript and then let's create our build and for the build we're going to use our typescript compiler we just want to add a dash p flag and then dot and what this is going to do is it's going to generate uh, or compile our typescript into the dist folder actually I'm going to delete the dist folder here because it'll create it on its own but it will it will add the JavaScript to that dist folder. So let's go ahead and save this. That should be all set. And then in app TS, I'm just going to do a standard express server here. Now, what's fantastic about this is we can now use the import syntax. We don't have to use const equals require. We can just say import express from express. And let's go ahead and initialize it. And if you've never used Express before, I would suggest watching my crash course on it. Let's just create a endpoint here. So function with request response. And I'm just going to have this do a res dot send, which will just send something to the browser. We'll just say hello. Okay, and then finally, we just need to run the listen method. We'll listen on port 5000. And let's just do a console log and we'll do a server running. Okay, so this should run. It should even if we run npm run dev, it should watch the TypeScript file nodemon should and we get server running. So you can see right here starting TS node source app dot TS. And if we go to our browser and go to localhost 5000 we get hello. Now we can use TypeScript here. Um, we could do string boolean all that stuff, but we can also use some of these custom express types like application. So our main app variable here, I can actually give this a type of express dot application like that. Um, now, if you don't want to have to do express dot before all this stuff, you can simply bring it in like this. So application, we also have request 
response and next function. So now I can get rid of the express dot and just do application. I can add a type to my request of request. So response, you do response. And then sometimes you might have a next function, which you can set to the type of next function. So that should still work if I save that. Good. And of course, we can just use regular, uh, you know, TypeScript types like I'll create a function here. Let's create a function called add. And uh, let's say we want to take in one number. And another number and return a number and then we'll implicitly return a plus b and it doesn't have to be an arrow function obviously okay and then we'll call this down here we'll just do a console log of add and pass in five and five okay so now when i hit the route this should run so i'll reload and then go back and down here you'll see we get 10 now we should have in in text editor linting with TypeScript as well as down here with TS node. So let's just do a string of five. And now you'll see argument of type five is not assignable to parameter of type number. Okay, it has to be a number because that's what we said it should be here. If I change this to string, then that error goes away. Okay, and it should also return a number. So let's save this and see what happens. Okay, so down here you can see we get our error. So um, same thing, assignment of type five is not assignable to number. All right. And this is coming from TS node. So it's a fantastic program, really easy to set up. But let's go ahead and change that back. Okay, and obviously, I mean, you can create interfaces and all the use all the, the, the benefits of TypeScript. I'm not going to go over all that. I just wanted to show you how to set up an easy workflow. Now, once you're ready to compile, or build, you can just do npm run build. And what happens is it creates a disk folder with app.js and now you can see our compiled JavaScript. And notice it's using arrow functions, it's using uh, cons and stuff like that because of our target. Now, just to show you real quick, if I were to delete the disk and go into my config here and change the target to ES5, Let's try to let's build again. And if we look at our app JS now, notice it's using var and it's not using arrow function. So it's all ES5. Okay, so you can control that. And there's a lot of different things you can do within these options, uh, but I'm not going to go over that. Okay, and then if we want to run our server or just run npm start, which is going to run the JavaScript, you can see right here it's running node app JS. And we can go to our browser and we get the same thing. All right. So basically the workflow is during development, you're going to use Nodemon that's going to run your TypeScript uh, linter or TS node. And then when you're ready, you can compile it and you can um, deploy your JavaScript. All right. So hopefully this helps you guys out that want to start using TypeScript on the back end and maybe even just to learn a little bit more about TypeScript in general. So if you like this video, please leave a like. I'd appreciate that. And I'll see you next time.